In today's video, I'm going to be taking you inside my head, showing you what I'm doing, why I'm doing it in a live online game of Madden NFL 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. My YouTube channel is devoted to helping you get better at Madden 21 through offensive and, and defensive tips and tricks that we post on YouTube every single day. I post new videos every day on YouTube at 8 o'clock uh, a.m. Eastern Time, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, and 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. So if you're interested in getting better at this game, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. All right, guys, so I'm working on kind of a little bit of a different scheme format here, um, doing some different things on offense, doing a lot of different things on uh, on uh, the defensive side of the ball. So really excited to kind of jump into this really quickly here with you guys today. Um, and basically what I'm doing is I'm running 3-4 Bear. Uh, I used to run 3-4 Bear last year and kind of went away with it, went, went away from it a little bit this year. But honestly, I've been jumping back into it, and it's been a lot of fun. This defense is a lot of fun because um, – it puts a lot of really honestly just puts a lot of stress uh, on your opponent forces him to have to do certain things uh, just differently and so he's going to have to like force we're going to force the issue a little bit with him um, on the defensive side of the ball and on the offensive side of the ball I'm kind of experimenting with my old offense um, west coast you're going to see a lot of snap throws you're going to see a lot of uh, quick reads uh, different things like that to try to basically handle uh, some of the things that a lot of people are going to be doing so really excited to jump into that here you're going to see we're going to get a nice interception right off the bat out of the 3-4 bear now the 3-4 bear defense is in my defensive ebook um, it's in my 46 uh, ebook which you can pick up in the description of this video the west coast offense i'm actually probably going to be putting this in the text message membership this week uh which if you want to pick up that all you got to do is just shoot me a text message my phone number is 812-216-3644 all right, guys, so what I'm going to be doing is you're, you're going to see I'm going to run a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of snap throw, little quick reads, uh, quick passes. Um, these, this curls play is probably one of my favorite plays in the entire game. And we're just going to start him out with this little quick read right here. This is one of my favorite plays, just a little quick screen pass uh, to the tailback or to the fullback right out of the backfield. Now, the beauty of the West Coast, in my opinion, is the ability that it has, number one, to obviously pick up some pressure, but more importantly than just picking up pressure, to be able to kind of pin, pull, quick read your way up and down the field. So that's kind of what I'm going to try to do in this video. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in, is to run this little fullback dive. Now, there's a couple different ways to motion that you can actually make this very, very effective. You can motion to the left. Um, you can also motion to the right. You're going to get this nice plus one advantage. And it's going to be tough for them to consistently stop this run in the backfield. One of my other favorite things that you can do is because you have that fullback um, – uh, because you have this fullback in the backfield as your running back right here, you can do this little motion right here. You see it's going to be hard for him to blow this up with his user because you have that little offset back to be able to give you some, you know, some uh, blocking mechanics. So all you got to do is ID their user, and really you can move the ball down the field pretty well. Some people will be able to blow this up. There's certain defenses that will work really well against blowing this up, but not every defense will. Another thing I want to show you is a little bit of a assignment glitch here. It doesn't look like he's going to give me a, a real good look for it. So we're just going to go to this right here. Um, now this is my curls play. And we're just going to take our quick flat here. Just take our underneath. But the cool part about far tight slot is there's a lot of different glitches. I don't know if necessarily glitch is the right word, but there's a lot of man switching. Um, there's just a lot of alignment issues that these little under center formations allow you to get, which is going to allow you to basically be able to work the ball up and down the field against pretty much any defense that your opponent is going to run. He's going to have to base a line if he plays this defense 100%. And if he base aligns, one of the things you're going to notice is we're going to be able to hit different types of snap throws, you know, just little quick plays here. You'll see here this little uh, quick snap throw right there. I missed my hit route. I have my hit route wide open, end up missing it. And uh, he's going to actually end up getting me for a sack. So good defense by him. He looks like he's running mid blitz, uh, just trying to get some quick pressure. Now, one of the things that you'll see me run a lot, a lot, a lot is this flats play. It's probably one of my favorite plays in the entire game. Uh, and basically what I like to do is put my tight end on a little delay fade. Um, but I love this little little quick uh, little quick fullback screen here. Uh, I think this might be one of the most nattiest style of plays um, that you can really employ in this game. 
Now, uh, what you're going to see right here is I'm actually going to go to the screen again, but instead of running more of a screen, I'm actually going to run a little bit more of a little under center hitch type of play, just trying to get, um, honestly, just trying to get a first down right here. And you're going to see here, um, I'm going to be able to hit just some quick hitches, quick little little pins and pulls, um, and, and really be able to move the ball up and down the field. Now, he can notice that I think he's in 3-4. Um, you're seeing a lot of 3-4. So I could do different things like this with my motions. Um, these mo Just make him respect the run. You know, if you can average four yards a carry with this offense, uh, you're going to be very, very hard to stop. Now, one of the things you notice here is that he's man aligning his defense. When people man align against me, that's not a very good formula because what you'll see here is there's actually a little bit of a glitch with this formation um, as far as how it pertains to uh, different situations like this when they man align. You see he goes inside right there, and then I can basically basically um, either snap throw to the tight end or I can have some different options. Now, I believe he might be man. I'm not sure, quite sure exactly what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball as far as his alignment goes. Um, I don't think he's actually man aligning. I don't know exactly what he's doing. He might be just doing default alignment. Um, but you'll see we should be able to get some decent, um, you know, decent deals here if he continues with this strategy. And there you see there's that little snap throw. I absolutely love that against cover four. If he's going to run cover four, I'll throw that snap throw pretty much all game long. Um, now right here I'm going to go to fullback dive. Just kind of out of a no huddle situation. And one of the beauties of this offense is that fullback dive will typically fall forward for at least one to two yards almost every single play. In my opinion, is probably the the one, and, and most people would tell you to run, and even I would probably tell you to run it from the near jumbo formation but to be quite honest with you, it's actually just as good from the far tight slot. It might even be even better from like the near close flex. Uh, you can do some things with 01 trap. Uh, if I can put this in my audibles here, but kind of setting this stuff up for this potential red zone situation that I'm about to be in. So these little fullback dives, I think, are super, super, super effective. You see here, I can, you know, kind of playmaker the dive um, also. Just kind of against mid blitz, I actually think this is going to be really, really good against mid blitz because it's going to be hard for them to just. It's it's really one of those runs that's hard to shed. Um, so, anyways, if you guys want to get the full offense, I'm actually going to probably um, start running this again a lot, uh, just because I've really been enjoying it. It's kind of made offense fun uh, for me. Now he actually gets a nice user blow up uh, with his guy here, and we're gonna go for this just honestly for the video's sake. Um, I probably should kick a field goal here, but I'm going to go ahead and go for this. And if he runs man coverage, um, one of the beauties of the far tight slot is you have some really, really good reads uh, if he runs that kind of coverage. So right here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fullback on a little flat. I've got that shoot flat to the back out of the backfield, and then I'm going to have a little uh, little pop pass here to the tight end. Depending on where his user goes, um, that's going to give me a lot of options. And right there, I just... I end up nice bailing out uh, just bad defense by him we're able to get in I probably should have hit the pop pass to the tight end to be honest um, but ended up taking uh, ended up taking that other route and it ended up working out for me now one of the things that people are going to do to you especially if you run this offense like with any level of consistency you're going to see a lot of people are going to want to run some version of man-to-man -man coverage on you. At least that's been my estimation. A lot of man-to-man -man coverage is what I've been seeing. So when people start to run man coverage, that's where this play, the curls play, is super, super effective. You have man switches all over the field, and you're able to really do some nice things here. So right here, I'm looking to almost hit this little pop pass. If that linebacker blitzes, he does, and you see you can hit that little pop pass to the tight end. So this is all in all one of those offenses that it's just it's it's a ball control offense. It's really it, it almost is really true West Coast style, um, where you you know you're running a lot of ball control. You're running a lot of quick reads. Um, the big thing with this is to not force anything um, and to have really really good pocket presence because you are playing under center. And when you go under center, a lot of times people can blitz you and do different things like that. So you just have to kind of be prepared for some of that stuff with the user rush and the man pressures that you're going to get. If you can work with these uh, baseline glitch type things that we can do from this, this is actually really, really effective. Now back on the defensive side of the ball, uh, I don't think I even have my substitutions in. What I like to do with the Packers is I like to use her Darnell Savage. Um, so what I want to do is I want to put Darnell Savage down here, put Adrian Amos right here. And then Ty Summers uh, right here, Preston Smith right there, and we should be fairly set up here. Now, I like to run this, um, as a general rule, I like to run this base aligned. And the primary reason that I do that um, is I just, 
I think that this defense, for whatever reason, plays a lot better when it's base aligned than when it's not base aligned. Um, just based on what I've been seeing. Now, man coverage is not necessarily going to play better uh, when it's base aligned, but zone coverage plays significantly better base aligned um, than non-base aligned. So you're going to be able to do you know, different things just to stop a lot of what popular things people are going to do. And really you're going to force them to take their underneath, take their underneath, take their underneath, and then you're going to get in situations uh, where you're able to you know, take that away, obviously. So something like this right here. And now I take away those hard flats with the um, with the with the linebacker. So it's really a, a chess match, a chess match, a chess match. And really, what I like about it is it always looks the same. You're always going to have identical covered shells. Um, every play has the key for this to work. If you really want to run a style of defense like this, in my opinion, the key is that you have to absolutely have to make every play look the same. If you don't make every play look the same, it will not work, and you will not be successful guarantee it 100%. You can take that to the bank. And really, in my opinion, one of the other keys to this defense uh, is to gas them up. You want to be sending pressure the majority of the time, in my opinion. Um, just because if you don't do that, you're going to run into a lot of issues with like, you know, they're just going to get too comfortable in the pocket and you just don't want that to happen. Now, this guy's kind of made the decision that he wants to come out and he wants to really try to dot me up. So, um, you know, I just have to be kind of mindful of that. Right here, throws a tight end route again. And that was where, you know, it was one of those things where he ran the same play too many times. And that's where you as a user get to be able to always take away something in the middle of the field. And that's what, something that practice mode can't account for. Practice mode cannot account for your user and what your user is going to do to them. Um, and so that's where this offense really starts to become, offense and defense, I apologize, really starts to become tough is when you're able to start forcing their user to make mistakes um, either with their quarterback or with their with their defense okay so right here again we're looking it looks like he's going to run man-to-man -man coverage uh, when people are running a lot of man-to-man -man coverage on you i will run this play right here i'll actually run this a lot um, and when i motion this guy out instead of putting him on this curl route what i'm going to do is i'm going to hot route him to a fade and then basically motion him back to the left. And you see that the guy's going to come inside and guard the tight end, and he's not going to guard the receiver. So it's a really nice little uh, ability and option for you to be able to beat man-to-man -man coverage in the red zone and still have all of your other quick reads on the left side of the field that they have to use her. They can't really use her both sides. And so when you can kind of attack that solo side um, with a couple quick routes and a couple things like that, it really does put a lot of stress on their user in this game. So, again, if you want to get the offense, all you got to do is text me. My number is 812-216-3644. We're going to be breaking it down uh, this week in my text message membership. But also, if you want to get the defense, uh, the defense is actually in the description um, below. Okay? It's right here. I just know I got to cover the middle of the field. And that's where we're just going to mix and max our – I actually really like to uh, honestly just, like, mix up my coverages. I feel like as long as I'm mixing up my coverages, I'm going to be really, really, really effective. So right here we're just kind of playing like three high and he's going to throw it to me again and you see i mean the defense is just deceptive it's not it's not necessarily like super super sound like if he would have thrown a flat route he probably would have had it but you're choosing to take specific things away at specific points and that to me is what really makes this defense tough 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 now, um, one of the things you notice is he's running goal line. And what I like to do against goal line is I like to do this route right here, this little combo right here. I find this to be very difficult to stop. Either the dive or the foot, either one of the dive plays um, actually work really, really well in the goal line. And it's kind of up to you to kind of play a little bit of chess and understand what runs work against what defense. But if you can pick the right running play, you can actually have a lot of success uh, with this with this offense. You'll see right here, you, you notice that he's running kind of a little bit of a, of a hybrid defense here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the fullback dive, but I'm going to playmaker this run um, so that it goes to the other side. And really my goal here is to catch his user on the back side of the formation and to be able to hit this. Uh, and we are able to get in there and get a two-point conversion. So you see how this formation gives you some really big time tools um, in those short yardage kind of grind it out type of games. You're able to really put some drives together and work it up and down the field. It's really a true West Coast offense, especially with the way the passes work. Um, I tried to really design this as a 
um, as a as a true West Coast offense where you're really wanting to hit the quick passes, the timing patterns. You're really wanting to kind of use the almost a ball control approach, approach to passing. Now, one of the things you're going to notice here is because he can't pass, um, looks like he's going to start running the ball. And we'll see how this works against this. Uh, looks like we're going to get stretch power over to the left side. You see that this does a pretty decent job against a lot of the popular running plays that um, that people are going to run against you. So here we have outside leverage. Um, now this is actually a really interesting you know position here that he's going to probably put me in. Um, looks like he's going to actually flex this guy out. So I've got to cover uh, Tyreek Hill. And he's going to motion him back in. It's actually an interesting decision. I probably would have left him motioned out. So now I know that I have to go get Sammy Watkins at the snap of the ball. And there it is. So again, those are those little, you know, knowing where you're weak, knowing how to fix the problems of your defense, not understand the natural problems that your defense is going to create. If I have eight people at the line of scrimmage sending heat at somebody, um, the, the natural thing that that's going to create is it's going to create some issues on the outside. We're going to have one-on-ones. We're going to have things that we have to fix. So by knowing what you have to fix, you know, then you're able to actually go out and execute it. Now he's still kind of running this man line defense. I really want to beat this defense. And uh, accidentally snap through it to the tight end. That's not what I meant to do at all. Uh, what I was trying to do is I was trying to hit the hit the route on the right side, which was going to basically be wide open. But unfortunately, I accidentally did something wrong. So, all right, right here, I'm going to leave the man coverage up on that. And you see how it's just kind of a almost like a chess match. You know, just kind of like you're. You're really kind of giving different looks, different coverages, different strategies, different shells, different things that they have to kind of account for. Like right here, I'm going to go to cover three, right? But I'm going to throw a, a, a cloud flat here on this left side. Um, you see against the run, the run is not always, you know, there's some runs that are actually going to do pretty good against this defense. Uh, but most of them uh, are not like popular runs. They're not runs that a lot of people are using. Uh, and there he's going to end up getting me over the top. I just need Perry Nickerson to make the tackle here. And he's going to make it down at the one-yard line. I probably should have tried to dive a little sooner, to be honest. Uh, that's going to put us in a little bit of a tough situation. But if you guys are watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet, the research shows that 40% of you guys that watch my video are not subscribed. It's completely free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, so I want to ask you right now, if you haven't subscribed, to go ahead and do that by clicking the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. That was a nice little play there, a little QB blast. So you can tell he's running New Orleans' this playbook. He's got the tight offset. He's got the QB blast that he's working. So he puts together actually a really good couple plays, um, able to go down and uh and get home on me all right so we're kind of dropping dropping some coverage off here in the right uh, we got manned up on the left side here so really we're hoping that we can get some left side pressure uh home at the quarterback and we're able to get that user lurk in the back of the end zone pretty good defense right there uh, pretty good goal line defense, in my opinion, running man on one side, hard flat zone coverage on the other side, and then using the, the deep post. So we've got 19 seconds here. I think he gets the ball at half. No, I think we I – th yeah, I think he does. He definitely gets the ball at half. So, um, you know, right here, we actually get a really – we're thinking field goal, right? we got got probably three plays. Um, if he keeps running that man coverage on us – I feel pretty confident that I can actually hit that. Um, so I'm going to go to like a little bit of a big play type of uh, type of setup here. And this is one of my favorite plays in the game. He might be base. I don't think he's base aligning. And. I need Robert Tonian to break one tackle. Unfortunately, he doesn't break a tackle, and he doesn't catch the ball. So we've made a couple mistakes here, and, you know, obviously he's going to have a chance uh, to come back. So we've got to make sure that we're playing, you know, kind of kind of sound football right here. We're going to motion Devontae Adams over. 
try to get kind of a motion snap on him. And through a pick. So that was just a bad decision. Uh, that was honestly just a bad decision. I was trying to force it down the field a little bit. Uh, and I give him a little bit of a decent chance here to go get a touchdown. So it'll be interesting to see what he calls. But what we're just going to do is just run simply. Um, we're probably just going to run cover three. And again, it's because we know how to fix it, right? It's because we know how to fix it. That's all it is. And he's going to throw it right to us. We might get a pick six right here. Oh, dang it. I should have stayed to the right. Good defense by him. But, I mean, you see the you see the power of this defense. It's very confusing to somebody. And because they have to make so many decisions within a two-second time period. Oh, we do get the ball. Nice. Um, because they have to make so many decisions within such a quick time frame, it really puts a lot of stress on the defense as far as what they're going to be able to do and not do. So it's just something that I think is really, really effective, um, you know, just as far as, as how it goes. So. All right. Let's see here. Now, this is where you kind of put the game away. Like, you know, you've kind of established your dominance. This is where you go on a four-minute offense style and really start to kind of work what I believe to be the key to this offense, which are these under center little natty um, natty style plays that, that they're just going to have to deal with it. I mean, it's just really tough to stop these plays, um, in my opinion. And, of course, I throw a pick right off the jump. That's the one thing I got to watch out for with those quick passes is I got to watch out for those, like, if they're in that area. And that's where I'm still kind of learning the reads a little bit. Um, whenever you're learning a new offense, it takes you a couple of, like, it takes you several games to start to understand. Um, in my opinion, you know, I feel like you really have to understand, whenever you run, whether you're running an offense or you're running a defense, you have to understand what the problems are with it, right? Where are your weaknesses? What are the problems? What do you need to fix, right? Um, and so, like, on that snap throw right there, normally I'm able to hit that, especially if they're running hard flats right there. I think he ran just his stock curl flat, was able to get out there on, the, on that route. So that's just something that I've got to be aware of and just have to be better equipped for next time. But it's all, you know, anytime you're running an offense, anytime you're running a new defense, both of those things will always be able to work as long as you make the correct read and you're able to move the ball down the field um, at a high level. So this guy's kind of strategy. Looks like he's going to try to blitz us now. Um, and we're going to hit that tight end right up the seam there. If he's going to, if he's not going to take that seam away, we always have that little route um, to the tight end. Oh, honestly, the offense hasn't looked great. Um which is kind of sad because I was practicing this, practicing this earlier, and it was really, really tough to stop. This is one of my favorite plays right here. It's just it's it's all hot routes too, which is really nice, and you don't need Hot Route Master to run this. But just these little quick underneath routes, just tough, especially with so much Mabel coverage in the game right now. Um, you're able to really work the ball up and down the field against somebody if they're running Mabel coverage. Like they're gonna have a really tough time stopping this offense, hundred percent. Like right here, you see, like looks like almost heavy pressure, um, but he's not going to take that away. Um, yeah, I, I think that was kind of lucky, um, and I'll, I'll let him return it. I think that was kind of lucky. Uh, my guy ends up dropping a wide open first down, and he ends up getting a pick, and he's right back in the ball game here. So as much as we were like in complete control, we throw two pick sixes. I think we've thrown five, four or five interceptions. So, uh, in all honesty, you look back at the game and say, well, we really haven't done a good job of reading the defense. That's that's the bottom line. Um, and that comes with a new offense. You're going to throw picks. You're going to make mistakes. Um, but what you'll find is, you know, when you got to put a clutch of drive together, what are the key plays? What are the couple key things that you're going to do that's going to separate you? Okay, so we got to lock up a little bit. we got to play a little bit better on offense. Our defense has played really, really well, I think. Goes to QB Blast. Actually, a good call by him. And we're in ball. We're in. We're in almost like a grudge match at this point. We went from being up by seventeen to now being up by only three, in a matter of three minutes. So that's how quick games can turn around. 
But I truly feel like we're the better player. I really feel like the offense is going to start to click here. Uh, we just have to be patient. One of the keys with this offense is to be patient, um, especially if they're going to be blitzing you a lot. See, like right here, see how he's bringing that man coverage in? Like, I really feel like this right here is going to be the key to beating him, this motion. Yeah, I missed my reads on the left side. That guy's wide open. And Chris Jones is kind of wrecking a lot of my offense, to be honest. Um, he's honestly just sending his entire um, team into coverage. And because Chris Jones has um, whatever the ability is, I've actually noticed that he gets a lot of really good sheds and regs. So we've got to do a little bit better of a job here. Um, honestly, this is kind of a key down for us. I'm going to try to hit the curl play. He's running so much cover four. I feel like we should be able to hit this right here. And we didn't get the rack animation that we wanted to get from that. So that's going to put us in a fourth down and 11, which is actually a really, really bad uh, place to be. So we're going to have to go to a play that I actually haven't ran a ton this game, um, but a play that I think is really good for beating a lot of the things that someone's going to try to do, uh, both on the offensive and on the defensive side. But in all honesty, it's basically a – and there it is. That's a huge conversion for us on fourth down. Just a little X spot action. And we'll just get out of there with Rodgers. And one of the things we haven't done a great job of is we haven't really ran the ball. Um, and I'm okay with that, um, even though I probably shouldn't be. If he's going to keep running so much cover four, though, I can hit this snap throw to Austin, um, especially if I'm not the wide side here. So, And he goes to cover two right there. Um, and we're actually going to try to catch him deep. Aaron Jones mossed him. If I would have waited maybe a split second longer, it might have been a bigger play, a little bit more open. It looks like he's running cover two. So once they start running cover two consistently, that's when you can hit them with something like what we're about to hit them with. Um, and really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this route to Tavon Austin to basically get instant separation. And it looks like he's going to go cover four again, so we're just going to take our quick flat. Unfortunately, our running back is kind of playing a little bit dumb. Now, if you have Hot Route Master, there's some other things that you could go to that would be probably a little bit more effective. Um, if he goes into something like this, this is where you have to absolutely, I mean, you have to, have to have to call this play right here. Because it's just, it's automatically going to be, you know, instant instant couple yards four minute offense we're going to try to keep him in this defense honestly and the big thing with the fullback dive this year is is being patient in my opinion um if you're willing to be patient with that run it will be very very effective for you now we're going to go down into the you know kind of the tight um the, the tight point of the game and the point of the game where we really need to be um, sharp, finishing strong here. A touchdown right here puts us in a really good position. And so really all I'm thinking about is this is where you go down, you run the ball, you you get your touchdown. Um, and it looks like he's going to run a little bit of mid blitz. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to that curls play again. Motion out, Austin. Yeah, that's okay. Not wasn't wasn't there. That might, I might have had the tight end at the snap there, but it's okay to take a sack. You got to realize that's fine.
And there's that snap throw slant. I really like that read. If he's running a lot of man coverage, you can easily hit that snap throw slant. Now right here, we're going to kind of show him the same motion. And honestly, I'm kind of hoping I don't get a block shed. I might get one though. And we got a huge run from Tyler Irvin right up the gut. We're able to get in for six. That's a huge touchdown. And that's where this offense really thrives. I feel like is this offense is really clutch. It gives you really, really clutch dots. I mean, the fourth down um, dot that we were able to throw, the fullback, the slam. I mean, that's a really good 12-play, four-minute drive. Um, that's kind of a champion. That's what a championship offense does. Able to go down, get the critical touchdown, even though it's not been playing great in the second half, able to go down and do that, put its defense back on the field. The defense has been the highlight of this game. Um, obviously, you see how effective. And I put some of this stuff out from the 3-4 Bear. And uh-oh, looks like he's going to get a huge kickoff return right here. We're going to try to catch him at the very end here, at least force him to have to take a field goal. Now, if I was in his shoes, I would instantly take a field goal and get back on defense and try to get another stop. But he probably won't do that. All right. Goes to that strong power once again. And we're able to box that up. And right here, we're going to throw just a little flat out there. And he actually threw... That was a really interesting route concept. I don't quite agree that that should have been that open. Kenny Clark makes a huge play right there. Um, right there, we were having a little bit of a tough time getting our adjustment set up. And he ended up uh, getting out pretty nicely. There we go. Now, I know that my job is to take away the slot. And he was throwing me a pick right there. I know that if I can get that slot... And that's a really, really hot, hot, hot read by him. A clutch dot from Mahomes. I completely disagree that that should beat that defense. I had him manned up. He lobbed it up and threw a laser. I don't really think that that should have beat him. I think the primary reason that that got open was because I didn't pass commit. But it puts him in a really, really nice uh, position here. Now, with the way he's running this, we're just going to run commit here. you got to believe you're going to see QB Blast. We do see QB Blast. He somehow magically gets in. That's probably one of the flukiest scores that I've ever seen because we had that thing bagged. But good play call by him, I guess. So uh, right now we've got to go back on offense. We've got to um, – and we've got to score. Uh, we're kind of back in the same position, same predicament we were in. Now, we have two minutes really – we don't have to score. We just need a first down. We need a first down or two, and we'll be able to, to mop it up. So, um, you know, this is where, again, this offense is super, super powerful. Uh, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're always being smart with it. You want to make sure that you're using the ball control uh, components of this uh, whenever you need to and whenever it's smart to. So those are kind of some key points to running this. You use strong close. You use some of those other things when you need them. But by and large, you're going to be wanting to sit in um, halfback dive here. Halfback dive, fullback dive, some of these quick plays. Force him to have to take timeouts. Force him to work the clock a little bit. Um, right here, we're just going to kind of test some things out against his defense. We're not going to snap the ball, um, but we're just going to kind of see. Okay, and you see that little movement right there. <laughs> And we will come back to that movement um, throughout the course of this game. But we're in a second and eight situation here. I really don't want to put the ball in the air, but I think I'm going to just because I feel like he's really giving me a really good look for this. Um, I think he's running cover four on the outside here on the right. And he actually goes man coverage. We're able to hit our little running back screen. And that's what that screen pass does such a good job of. It really, it's very difficult to user that play. A lot of people's solution to that play will be to user it. The problem is if you user it, you really leave yourself very vulnerable to other things. So let me show you what I'm talking about. For example, if I ran the curls play, right? And I just took um, Devontae Adams and I put him on a slant, right? Super, super simple, right? But I motion this over and make it look exactly like what I just ran here. 
I'm looking snap. Nope, not there. And if that middle is wide open, I can easily hit that route across my face um, for a huge, huge, huge play. Gets me in scoring position. Now, it probably wasn't the smartest thing for me to, to go ahead and pass the ball two times and get really good gains, but um, just wanted to show you a little bit more of a glimpse of the offense. Now, when you motion this receiver over here, he typically will help with the blocks on this um, on this run. Kind of snap him kind of right in here. And double A gap actually did a good job right there of stopping me. But again, he has to call timeout. Now, he's choosing not to call timeout. And this is going to allow me the opportunity to be able to go to something like this right here. Something really, really quick, but something that's really not that great and or not that hard to um, to run and something that's going to force once again, we're forcing that timeout, we're forcing that timeout. And now we're in a third down, we need a big dot. And this is where this offense really, really shines in my opinion. So we're going to go to the curls play once again. We've got our double uh, wheel route type of set here, but we also have this little route to Austin that's going to pull uh, a lot of stuff down. And he actually left that tight end route wide open. We hit it really quickly because his user goes to the running back route. And that's a huge, 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 huge touchdown to seal it. That's going to seal the game, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the gameplay. We'll keep playing here. We might have some good stuff, but if you want to get the offense, this will be in my text message membership. And again, this offense is going to continue to build, to build off of one another. It's going to continue to get really, really deep. I think this offense is really, really clutch. It gives you a lot of things that your opponent really has to respect. The only thing I wish this had uh, was like a is like a quick toss, but with this double screen right here, you actually get um, somewhat of a semblance of a quick toss play um, that you're able to run. Right there, if they're not respecting that tight end, if they don't use her that tight end, that's probably going to be a two-point conversion or a touchdown every single time. A little quick pop pass um, just really does a lot of damage. Gets in a really tender spot against zone, against man coverage. And, um, yeah, just really, really tough. So, anyways, guys, um, if you haven't joined the text message membership, this video is coming out in the text message membership, or this offensive scheme is going to be coming out in our text message membership today. Um, or not today, I'm sorry, but it, it will come out uh, as soon as we release that. So, if you want to get that link, that link is in the description. Uh, looks like he's going to go ahead and go over top on us one more time. Um, I should I accidentally unbase aligned my defense, and that's end up really honestly what happened right there. That was just bad defense by me, especially in that situation. I probably shouldn't even be in cover zero. I should have been in um, uh, zone coverage or something to prevent stuff like that from happening and just give him the underneath, but that's okay. No big deal. Nothing hurt. We'll get back on offense once again, and we'll make some easy reads and make some easy decisions, easy lasers. Easy lasers. Um, he is going to go ahead and go for an onside kick here. Now, he is only down three, so if he gets the onside kick, um, he's going to be in a really good position. Now, I haven't really had a lot of issues recovering onside kicks as long as I come out an onside kick, and to be quite honest with you, um, let's see if we can't get a little sticky here on him. It's pretty nice. I actually have finally figured out how to do the stop and go, which is kind of cool. I wonder if you stop and go the fullback dive, if it would be very effective or not. But anyways, guys, we'll have uh, we might have a stand, we might have a, a play from this offense that we post on the channel uh, today. We'll see if we can get that play done. But I think it just does a lot of damage. This play, this offense can really, really do a lot for you. And right there, I missed my wide open guy. Um, now, it's really, really critical as an offense that you are making sure that you're on conservative here. I actually made the mistake of not playing on conservative, and I could have potentially fumbled right there. So, you you know, when you're in these clutch situations, and that's why with this offense, honestly, I would probably play on conservative all the way around just because this is one of those offenses that is like super, super clutch, super, super clutch. Um, and if you want to maximize the clutchness of it, I would recommend, you know, running on that type of setting but again if he's not paying attention you can hit that snap throw all day long and even though we threw for uh four even though we threw four interceptions i felt like overall the offense still showed itself to be very effective there's a lot that you can do from this especially if you have like hot route master if you have hot route master there's even more that you can do from it i'll show you another little bit of a And we'll take our little fullback screen, get up field, and we'll call two timeouts and show you just a couple more plays with this. I really like running this offense. I think this offense is really tough to stop um, consistently. And again, if you have Hot Route Master, 
um, you're able to do a lot more from it. You do something like this right here. That's okay. We'll take a sack. That's fine. And we'll, we'll show you one more play. But let's say, like, you're facing... If you're facing a lot of, like, mid-blitz style of stuff, then the beauty of this offense is you have answers for pretty much every defense in the game. You have answers against cover zero. You have answers against cover two man. You have answers against all kinds of stuff. So another thing that I could do if I wanted to is I could go to something like this right here, which doesn't look like much of a play, but if they're running cover zero on me, like this guy's running a lot of cover zero on me, I should be able to hit him... Uh, hit Devontae Adams and right there that was kind of a bad example of what you can do but you certainly can hit that route so anyways guys I want to thank you so much for watching today's video we're going to have more stuff on this we might have a sample play up later um, from the West Coast book on our YouTube channel we're going to be running this tonight on stream if you want to come by and see it um, we're going to be streaming at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time thank you guys so much for your support if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and do that if you haven't joined the discord yet that links in the description make sure to text me if you want to pick up this offense or if you want to pick up any of our other pro schemes that we release every single week um, and if you want to pick up the defense that link is in the description of my defensive ebook thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in our next video